guys to another session on dynamic programming. Today's topic is splitting a string with M cuts and finding the optimal cost. It's problem DPV 6.9. So let's look at the overview. You have you are given a problem where you have a string with length n and you have M cuts that are predefined. These are locations that are predefined and we have to find the minimum cost of cutting this. Now the cost is a little bit confusing at this point. The cost is uh, basically when you copy a string while cutting, that's the cost. And for example, if you have given a string of length 20 and if you have two cuts in the middle, either at three or 10, uh, actually both at three and 10, which one would you do first? So you could cut it at three and then at 10, or you could cut it at 10 and then cut it at 3. So what we have is that if you cut it at 3, uh, then what you have left is 17. So initial cost was 20 when it came in, and the next cut would be at 17. So the cost is 20 plus 17. But if you cut it at 10 first, then 20 came in, and the next cut would be made by a string of length 10. So its cost is lower. 20 plus 10 is 30 right because the cost is always the incoming string and if you cut it two times the incoming string in the beginning is 20 and after you made a cut the string remains 17 and you try to cut it again so it's it's the 17 length again so it's it's um, 20 plus 17 that's 37 here and 20 plus 10 that's 30 here so hopefully that's clear um, if it's not clear, then please do read the problem statement as it's defined in there as well. So with that, let's dive into the solution. So the thesis for our solution or the recursion is essentially the same idea as like a chain matrix multiply. You're given a string and you have to make M cuts. So at any point, we are just gonna make one cut and one optimal cut only. And the way it's done is that Lij, we just need to find 1k, which is the optimal. And then we can go back to subproblems and solve it in subproblems. Now, we know that we can find Lik plus Lkj, and the cost of the overall buffering of this incoming uh, string was Cj minus Ci. So, and then we have to move the k around between i and j to find the best possible solution. And before we dive into the solution, we have to see the initialization condition. And once more, you start by smaller problems, which is right around the diagonal. Diagonal is basically exact diagonal is 0, 0, which is if you start at 0, end at 0, the, there's no cutting to be done. So this is 0 clearly. But even the next one, if you're given just L01, then there is nothing to cut. It's already cut there's no more cuts to be done, right? Zero to one is one of the cuts of the solution. Likewise, one to two is, so you also fill these next ones with zero because there is no uh, there is no cutting uh, choice there. It's already pre-cut. So hopefully you understood that. And one more thing I wanna point out is that we're gonna assume that uh, zero here is a cut at the beginning and five, in this case we have five, but if there are, you know, M cuts, then one cut is in the beginning and the last cut is at the end, right? Which is the nth location. So keep that in mind that there are two extra cuts because of the solution definition. We're, de we're gonna define if there are only cuts that are one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four cuts, we're gonna define this matrix to go from zero to five. One extra cut on the left side, one extra cut on the right side, because that covers the end of the string the zero covers this beginning and the m plus you know uh, m plus two covers this last point so total of if there are m cuts defined here add two more cuts one for the beginning one for the end and that makes this recursion easier now let's look at the uh, more complex pieces once you have filled the diagonal and the next above diagonal which is also zero the next one has one choice. Now, if you go from zero to two, if you go from zero to two, there's only this one cut and there are not really any more options. So the way you cut this 
is basically it's C2 minus C0 because each of these is zero. We already know that along the diagonals and the next two diagonals all zeros. So this is zero, this is zero, we're left with C2 minus C0 and so on. And so this is this diagonal is fairly simple. If you look at this diagonal, that is the third diagonal up, this is always a straightforward choice. Now the next diagonal from there is got two choices and that's the one that's described in the question as well. Now this diagonal, if you look at C03, if you go from zero to three, right? This problem, this is your problem, let's say one of the problems, one of the sub problems that you have to solve. Now in this case, if you go zero to three, again, you could cut at one first, then two, or you could cut at two first and then one. And the cost is different, right? The cost is different because uh, like described in the problem, the cost of these two is different. So you compute each one of these based on the recursion. So if you are doing one first, then two, then the cost is zero to one plus one to three, and that's this value here, right? Because zero to one is by our diagonal uh, initialization, this is zero, and one to three is just simply C3 minus C1. Um, and so next you compute two one, because if two followed by one, then the cost becomes L02 plus L23 right, um, because you, it's zero to two plus two to three. And zero to two, because there's only one element in the middle, the cost is C2 minus C0, and which is already pre-computed here. And two, three is because they are next to each other the, from the diagonal initialization, anything next to each other cost is zero. So now also remember that there was the C3 minus C0 in the beginning, because before you did uh, from this equation, there was the C3 minus C0 in the beginning, right? So C3 minus C0 plus these two, uh, sorry, plus either this or this. So you have to pick the uh, minimum of um, the first pick or the second pick, right? Uh, either you will cut one followed by two or you will cut two followed by one. And these are the two options here. So either C3 minus C0 plus either this one or C3 minus C0 plus this one. And whichever one is the minimal cost, you pick that one. And so these these are two choices. If you have if you have this sort of a uh, problem, then either you pick this or this first, and then the other one next. So this problem obviously has two choices. And all these diagonals have two choices. So you solve these one next. Then you get to three choices. If you expand this to this point, then you can pick this one first, followed by this, followed by this, and so on. So there's many choices right? There's many choices. And all you have to do is walk your first choice because we don't figure out all the choices in dynamic programming. If you're trying to solve zero to four, you just pick between zero to four uh, the options. Are they going to pick one? Are you going to pick two? Or are you going to pick three, right? So those would be your three choices here. And you compute each one of them based on the pre-computed uh, solved problems before you and you find the options for each one of them, for one, for two, for three, right? And so you have minimized this value and then likewise, you have the other diagonal. Finally, you come to this last choice. And this is this has got four choices because if you go from all the way to here, you, have, you can pick this one first or this one first or this one first or this one first. You have four choices and that's showing up here, four choices, right? So once you have figured this out, you have solved L05. L05. Remember, L05 is the ends of this solution. And so that is the solution to this problem. That when you've solved L05, you have the final answer. And you, have, and you have four choices here. But they will be filled from these previous subset of solutions. And once you have solved this, that's your answer. So um, what is the order? And just like a chain matrix multiply, you know, you're filling up the upper half of this solution and therefore um, this is order n squared but keep in mind that for every location you have to basically choose between uh, these um, m options right so you have um, m possible uh, locations in the middle uh, for every uh, every one of these uh, calculations so the order here, you know, if m is the order of n, then it could be n cube, or you could say the order is n square m, because 
you know, you have um, actually, you know what, I think this should be M cube because uh, these are really, the cuts are really what defines this. And this is really M plus, uh, M plus two options here and M plus two options here. So this should be order of M cube, right? Because this is M squared in this upper half. Uh, and then for each, you have potentially worst case M options in the middle for choosing the K. So total uh, order of this is order of M cube, uh, not to be confused with the number of elements. It's really not a function of number of elements, but the num number of cuts you're going to make. And that is given as M. So this order is going to be order of M cube, right? Which is the number of cuts. So that's it guys. Hopefully you um, enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And as you have seen, we already almost a third of the way through the dynamic programming uh, problems of uh, DPV. And if you have made it this far, uh, I think uh, you deserve a pat on the back that you have solved or understood some of the most complex problems in the field of dynamic programming. And uh, I would uh, like you to keep watching this series and keep coming back for more. I'm going to be adding uh, further solutions, the remaining solutions in this chapter very soon. And until next time, thank you and bye-bye.